Tonight, I want to take you on a journey to some different places, but mostly to different ways of thinking about cancer and what we can do about it. Duke has allowed me to think totally differently about cancer. And tonight, I'd like to teach you to think differently about cancer. Because right now, at Duke University, we are changing the way patients with brain tumors are treated around the world. My journey starts far away, well, in Canada at least, where my father had surgery last week. It was cancer. I knew it would be. It was before. And that's the thing about cancer, is it never leaves us alone. Who here knows somebody with cancer? A loved one? Someone who's beaten it for now? Unfortunately, cancer keeps coming back in my patients, in your loved ones, and in all of our fears, really. And that's why we never promise a cure. And we take cancer very personally, don't we? And that's because it robs us of children, of memories, and of sunsets. So what is cancer? Well, we all have 50 trillion cells in our body, and they all start out with exactly the same genetic material. But changes in the DNA of tumor cells allow them to evolve in a very sinister and Darwinian fashion, such that they begin to divide uncontrollably. And I think that we've been blindly treating patients with medicines that try to prevent this cell division. And the problem with doing that is that that also damages normal cells. And so patients with cancer lose their hair, lose their appetite, and their dignity. This is where my journey at Duke diverged from the ordinary. I started to think differently about cancer. And tonight, I want you to start thinking differently about cancer as well. The truth is, we have not been winning the war on cancer, at least not for aggressive ones or ones that have spread, like my dad's cancer, or like the deadly brain cancer glioblastoma, or GBM, that I want to talk with you about tonight. You know, there are, are still a lot of bad diagnoses out there, but GBM, it's one of the worst cancers. The second it's diagnosed, it has already spread throughout the entire brain. And it starts so insidiously, maybe a stumble that you brush away, or the word that you just can't quite find. And then it becomes really hard just to tie your shoes. GBM is the most common type of brain cancer. We've been working on it for a century. It's still impossible to treat. Surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, they just don't work. No one survives. No one. Not even for a year. I wanted to change that. And I knew at Duke, we could change that. This is DNA. It encodes really all the important things in our bodies. And that red finger, that's what turns a cell into a cancer, a deceivingly simple change or mutation in the DNA. But you know what? That change, that mutation, also provides for me a molecular barcode or fingerprint that betrays the cancer cell as somehow different. And I believed that our immune systems just might be able to recognize that difference and attack the cancer cells and kill them with incredible precision. And I began to wonder if we could create a vaccine for cancer. It was a shot in the dark, literally, but nothing else is really working. And Duke recognized that as an opportunity. And it worked. Duke allowed me to think differently, to think across disciplines, and now to touch the lives of thousands 
of patients with brain cancer, their spouses, their partners, their children, and even grandchildren. So a cancer vaccine developed at Duke, really the first of its kind anywhere, has now been licensed to a large pharmaceutical company, and it's at the FDA waiting for approval. And another approach, a polio virus. Polio virus. How scary is that? Is actually being injected into the brains of patients with these deadly tumors, and some of those tumors are simply melting away. So watch the news, because soon everyone will know that Duke has changed the future for patients with brain cancer. So here's what that means. You know, it's personal. My first patient, her name was Amy. She came to see me in 2002. That's more than 10 years ago. She had just won a beauty pageant. She had just gotten married. And she had just gotten a brain tumor. It was malignant. It would kill her in a year. And she told me she wanted to have children. Wow. Well, Amy got the vaccine, and this is her today, along with her husband of more than 16 years, and their two children. And she's not... <laughs> Thank you. She's not a brain tumor patient anymore. She's a wife, a mother, and a flight attendant who goes to work every day. How's that for giving someone their life back? And then there's Ryan, an entrepreneur from St. Louis. He too wanted children. Didn't seem too much to ask. He really had everything else. Then a seizure, just like that. It could happen to any of us today. Then an MRI, then a brain tumor, then a bad one, the worst kind, actually, and a big one, too. So Ryan also tried the vaccine. And think about it, at the time, he's facing death and he tries something totally new. What courage. Well, this is Ryan today, his wife and their three children, all of whom he wants to matriculate at Duke, of course. <laughs> and these aren't the only patients that are doing well. Our vaccine has allowed the immune systems of these patients to eliminate these mutated tumor cells, just like that. And now, most of the patients with this deadly disease are alive more than five years after they find out they have a brain tumor. And some, some may even be cured. So back to my dad. Well, you know, this approach could work for all cancers. It could. So my dad got a vaccine right before his surgery as well. It was a shot in the dark, but why not? And he's my dad. Every day at Duke, I get to wonder, what's next? How fantastic is that? So what is next? Well, if we can treat cancers with a safe and simple vaccine, could we use a vaccine to prevent cancer altogether? I mean, think about it. Almost everyone in this room raised their hands earlier, but because of the work going on at Duke right now, I don't think that's going to be the case just a few years from now. We already know the barcode of this enemy, so let's be proactive. Can you imagine a world where it's not people with cancer who want children, like Amy and Ryan, who are getting vaccined, but you are getting a vaccine to prevent cancer, and cancer becomes a word that we simply forget about. Imagine that. Imagine if you were part of that. Well, I certainly hope that you are as proud to be part of Duke University as I am. Thank you.